This is Postscript, an in-depth follow-up to the sermons you hear each week at FaithBridge. We sit down with the speaker for behind-the-scenes insight on sermon preparation and more in-depth insights and discussion. Let's join in now. Thanks for joining us for another Postscript. I'm Mike DeStefano, and I'm here with Duffy Robbins, who just finished preaching today's Father's Day message. Thanks for being here, Duffy. My pleasure. Great message today. So funny. So gospel. Uh, really enjoyed getting to listen to you and the message that you brought to our whole church and really did a fantastic job. We got a lot of feedback from people who Great. were just very grateful. And I was just so impressed that you could take a, a sermon that was for Father's and Father's Day and make it so applicable to to young and old and mm. just really impact everyone with. Good. I was very touched personally, so Great. thank you so much. Uh, just a few questions for you, some yeah. that have come in and others that I have for you personally. Uh, and the first is you mentioned, uh, you introduced the characters, Saul, David, and the others. And uh, you mentioned Saul who uh, you, you uh, you told us that he, he sort of wrestled with this faith and faithlessness and he sort of did this dance back and forth between obedience and disobedience and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that there's a lot of men in the room, fathers, dads, and, and otherwise, who, uh, who can identify with that sort of, of lifestyle um, where when it's tough, they sort of run, but when it's convenient, they'll, they'll exercise some sort of faith. So to the people who were convicted by that, uh, I think it would be really helpful for, for just a follow up. How do they respond to that conviction as that comes up in the message? That's a great question because I think you're right. A lot of us, well, in fact, all of us probably at times are a Saul. Um, they, uh, what I see in this guy Saul is a, a tragic figure. I mean, I think it, uh, he, he had a lot of potential. And I imagine that, I mean, we don't know, but I imagine that he, he really started off with uh, good intentions, wanted to be, you know, a good king and stuff. But... Uh, the problem is you can't um, you you can't you know make the entire journey if you only have gas enough for half of it. He was trying to run on empty and uh, and without refilling, and uh, and that's just not going to work. And of course, what happened was he just he just ran out of gas, and it was it was an ugly scene. And there are a lot of dads and moms and you know people of all ages who know what that's like. They they don't really they don't really choose necessarily. A course of disobedience. I mean, there are examples where Saul, you know, he disobeyed, but he even disobeyed religiously. Mm. You know, um, he would he would he would actually uh, he would actually not do what God said, but in doing disobedience, he would actually you know ask God's blessing on his decision. So I mean, he, there, there were and there's evidence I think that Saul, in his heart, kind of wished that he could be this kind of guy. Um, and I think the key is. Honestly, it's uh, confession and repentance and changing one's mind. I mean, all you got to do is look at David. David, I mean, really on the face of it, David had did a lot more bad stuff than Saul did. Mm. But, but there, was, there was in David um, a repentance, a humility, a willingness to come back and say, God, create in me a clean heart. Put a new and right spirit within me. Saul wasn't willing to do that. Mm. And we are either broken before God or we're broken by our disobedience. Mm. And, and uh, Saul took the, the second course. So, yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're listening and watching, um, all of us have been Saul's. Mm. Uh, I, I think the key is to, to, is to try to keep a short account with God to say, I've got I've to confess my sin. Uh, I want to try to stay close to God and um, and then maintaining humility, um, and then maybe just uh, the accountability of having that was the thing about Saul. He didn't really seem to have any accountability. Mm -hmm. David, at least when you know he was approached by Nathan the prophet, mm -hmm. um, he, he you know he had somebody who's willing to talk straight to him. I don't think he wanted Nathan, but Nathan was there and he was willing to listen. And uh, that might be the difference between a Saul and a David is somebody who's willing to listen mm -hmm. when we get kicked, you know, in the wazoo and somebody says, hey, is that really the kind of guy you want to be? And you go, no, I, I don't, you know. And it might be the, the kicker might be your child. It might be your wife. And none of us wants to, you know, have that. But right. sometimes those holy kicks can really be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, and I, I think a lot of, what even the Saul needs to understand is the same message that was presented to Saul's grandson at the end of the message, mm -hmm. that it's that God's pursuing you and it's uncomfortable now, but he's pursuing you to love you. And that was what I thought was the most powerful idea and statement in your 
sermon. And so that immediately made me think of what you just said a second ago about repentance mm-hmm. in that verse in Romans where it says the, it's the kindness of God mm-hmm. that leads to repentance. Yeah, and yeah. so I was hoping that maybe in this time that we have just a little extra space, you could explain a little bit about what repentance does look like for those people who repentance yeah. is just a church word. Yeah, well, okay, just start off basically um, the Greek word metanoia comes from, it means to think again, it means to think again or to rethink. Um, and, uh, and so if you, if you, one kind of way to think about it is if, if you've, if you've sort of, you know, you've, you've kind of done this picture and you go, that's ugly and, and that's not good. And I really need to, I've been trying to create my own picture here. I need to have God, the creator, then you repaint. And, uh, and so, in a sense, repent and repaint. It's, it's, I'm going to start the picture over again. I'm going I'm to take, I'm going to go back and I'll let God choose the colors. I'm going to let God move my hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repent. I'm going to rethink the way I move. Uh, so that's kind of what the word means. The key is, though, that, <clears throat> is that repentance is, is motivated by love. Repentance is motivated by grace. That, um, that you know, the, the thing I love about that story in 2 Samuel 9 is that is that the king made the first move. Mm. You know, that uh, in, in fact, um, Mephibosheth could not. He was crippled by a fall. He was trapped in his circumstances. And that's something we need to recognize that, uh, you know, the, the only place that Mephibosheth made any move is at the end of the game when he said, I guess I'm going to receive this gift, you know. It's a free gift. I'm going to accept it. Uh, I'm going to choose to live in the Father's house. Uh, and, uh, and that's what repentance is. Repentance is not I'm going to clean up my act and I'm going to rethink my way back to God. Mm. It's, it's I am so moved by God's act of grace towards me and love towards me that I got to rethink. I've been running from this guy. You know, I've been running from this guy and hiding from him. Why am I doing that? And so I'm going to repent. I'm going to reverse course. I'm going to rethink. I'm going to put the brush in God's hand and have, I'm say, God, you paint this thing all over again. And, uh, and so it's not jumping, uh, you know, to God. It's more jumping for joy because of what God has done for us. Yeah, that's good. That's beautiful. So follow-up question to that is, have you ever seen that in your life with your kids where they've been maybe scared of reproach or punishment or something, but you've moved towards them with kindness, shown them grace, and then seen them yeah. react? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, well, I've seen it in my own life, you know, and let alone my kids. But, yeah, I totally, you know, where, where uh, you know, they, you know, probably were fearful of, of, you know, telling me something or coming to me. And probably feared, you know, what is going to happen? Because when they were little and they missed, but hey, we'd, we'd put them in the, the dryer, the spin cycle. And, uh, and you're laughing, but it builds character. And, uh, and, and so, you know, we, and so, yeah, I'm sure they were fearful, you know, oh man, what if I tell them, you know? Uh, but, uh, but ultimately, and this is something I, I often say to parents, you know, is that kids don't obey us because they don't want to break our rules. They obey us because they don't want to break our heart. Mm. And in other words, it's the love of God mm. or the love of our parents that call, that bring us to repentance. And so, yeah, I think ultimately it's that I don't want to, I don't want to hurt them. Mm. And, and, so, and so my kids would go, you know, I don't want to hurt dad. I know, or, or mom, you know, I know how much it would hurt their feelings. It would grieve them. And, uh, and then sometimes when they do, not to hold it over their head, not to go, oh, you know, forget it. You know, I'm, I trusted you once. You're never going to have my trust again. But it's to think back about, uh, you know, about how God has, has been willing to restore me and to accept me even when, you know, I've been disobedient or I've done what I really should have done. Um, I want to try to flesh that out mm. for my daughter. So, yeah, I've totally seen that yeah. in my kids. I've seen it in me. That's great. So actually, great follow-up to that. Uh, Brian D. texted us, uh, and he just said, could you explain a little bit more uh, about how to be God in the flesh to my children? He said it's the great adventure that we're sort of called to, and so yeah. could you talk a little bit more about that? Brian? Well, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, there, there's, that's a huge question, and, and there's a lot of different ways to go, but I mean, part of it, at least in, for me, uh, you know, all of us with, with our kids are learning as we go. I mean, I didn't get to practice on another set before I had this, you know, before I had my children. Right. Um, but but uh, I, I just think about how my actions, my speech, 
uh, the way I respond to them, the way I treat my wife Maggie, mm -hmm. uh, all that I'm trying to think of how does this reflect uh, an attribute or the attributes of God. Uh, if, I want, uh, if I want them to understand that God is gracious, then they need to see a father who is gracious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, um, I always say to, to dads, I mean, I think we talked about this this morning, just a, 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 I just said it in passing, but that, that, that that's one of the, the, the main tasks, I think, of fatherhood is how do I reflect and flesh out, you know, God's goodness. Um, so, but like to give you one example, um, is grace, you know, exercising grace, uh, you know, not to, not to always hold the standard up higher and, and to, you know, so, so for example, my children, um, because I think there were, you know, maybe because there are two of them, but when, whenever they, everything had to be exactly equal, you know, okay. so like they go, oh my gosh, that's like not fair. Like, you're going to let her do that? Like, you never, oh my gosh, that's like not, that's like so not fair. And everything had to be exactly 50, 50, uh -huh. you know, and, um, and I remember one day I got tired of that. They were in the car and I finally, and I mean, literally one day we were driving to school. We live in Valley Forge and we're going up Valley Forge Mountain. Aaron, the old one, we were in the middle school and Aaron, and the sun was coming right in the windshield. Aaron goes, I said, boy, that, I'm just making conversation. I said, boy, that sun is bright this morning. And she goes, that's not fair. And I said, I said, Aaron, you're right. It's not fair. And when daddy gets home, phone calls will be made and heads will roll. But I mean, <laughs> like, if that was just their default reaction. Right. It just, that's not fair. And so finally one day I just said, I said, you know what? I just stopped the car, pulled over, said, you don't want justice. Hmm. Trust me. None of us in the family wants what we deserve. Hmm. We had so much better. We got so much better than what we deserve. Uh, you know, it's like the it's like the uh, woman who had her portrait done, you know, and and she didn't like it. She said that that painting doesn't do me justice. And the artist said, "Ma'am, you know, with a face like yours, you don't want justice. You want mercy." <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of what I want. Well, if I want mercy. I've got to extend mercy mm -hmm. to my children. Mm -hmm. They will disappoint you. I mean, I, I've said to parents, I think parenting kids is cruciform. You will open your arms wide to embrace them and they will hammer a nail in mm -hmm. your hands. Mm -hmm. That's what the love of the father looks like. Yeah, yeah, that is great. That is so good. Uh, so last question, we had several parents uh, text or email and ask if you could recommend a book to dads or parents on how to flesh out the love of God to their kids. Okay. Um, my buddy Chap Clark has, uh, has written a book called Dads and Daughters. Okay. And um, I don't, it, there's a subtitle, but I can't remember the rest of it, but you could easily find it on Amazon. Chap Clark and uh, Dads and Daughters. So that would be one. And then um, if you are, uh, if you have a preteen or a teenager, um, I, along with uh, uh, a confederacy of about six other guys, six other people, wrote a book called There's a Teenager in My House. It's edited by Wayne Rice, okay. R-I-C-E, InterVarsity Press. Um, that's nothing but question answers, like a hundred you know, just question answer, right. you know, is my son, you know, how do I make, should I make my kid go to church? When is the age at which they should start dating? Uh, you know, is my son's anger normal? Is it appropriate for him to set the car on fire? You know, just basic questions. Uh, uh, and, <laughs> just uh, normal questions. Just normal yeah. questions. And, uh, and impractical answers that, that a lot of times parents uh, will ask when I'm doing a seminar for parents that I don't really have time to answer in that setting. But that's one of the reasons I really like that book. Wayne Rice was the editor. So don't, you know, look for my name. And it might come up if you do that on Amazon. But Wayne Rice edited it. And then myself and several other guys wrote responses to these letters. So that's help. I know it used to be called Help. There's a Teenager in My House. Now I think it's just called There's a Teenager in My House. Okay. Great, that's so helpful. So how long did it actually take you to learn how to pronounce the name? Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth, <laughs> yeah. I'm still working on it. Was that proportional on. to yeah, the time Yeah, you know, I worked up to it a syllable at a time, okay. uh, fib, oh, chef. Good, I've been yeah. avoiding it just the whole post yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, no, it, it's tricky, it's tricky. It sounds like a, a sneeze a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, it was, a, it was a fantastic sermon. So thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate you and, and all that you contribute to the body of, of Faith Bridge. So. Uh, and thank you for joining us for another Postscript. I wanna encourage you to keep, uh, help us to keep Postscript interactive. There are three ways to send in your questions or comments. You can either 
email us at postscript at faithbridge.org, text us at 707-670-3277, or you can uh, send us a tweet uh, using hashtag FP, FBPS. Excuse me. Uh, we'll be back next week with Ben Stewart, uh, and we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We hope this resource will help to enrich your small group discussions this week. If you're not currently a part of the life-changing community found in a small group, you're missing out on one of the best things about FaithBridge. Visit us and learn more at the Connection Center on Sunday or anytime at faithbridge.org slash groups. Also, we'd love to get your feedback about this podcast. Send us an email to postscript at faithbridge.org. We'll be back next week with a brand new postscript. Until then, have a great week.